Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Circle Time on Thursday. So exciting. All right, let's get started with our calendar. All right, does anybody remember what month we're in? We're still in May. Excellent. Let's count our numbers. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So how do we write a 14? Does anybody remember? A one and a four. Great job, everybody. Let's pull our one and a four. And we'll put it right there next to Percy. Percy's birthday is tomorrow. So what comes after 14? 15. So what day of the week? Does anybody know? Thursday. So let's work on our days of the week, okay? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What month? May, right? It is May 14th on a Thursday. Great job. Let's work on our months. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Excellent. Good job, everybody. All right, let's check in with our weather bear. It's been warm but rainy this week, right? So what kind of things do we need on a warm but rainy day? So let's start with a raincoat because if we go on a walk, we never know when it's going to start sprinkling on us. Probably wear pants today. Could probably get away with wearing a t-shirt under a raincoat. We want good puddle jumping shoes. Some people have rain boots. Some people have good puddle jumping sneakers. But remember, we need to clean up when we get home, right? So he's looking pretty good there. Let's put a hat on him since I don't have a hoodie raincoat. And what season is it? That's right, spring. Excellent. Spring brings rain, right? So if we're able to go for a walk between the rain, what do we need to do after the walk? That's right, thumbs up. Write it in your fitness journals, right? If you know that you went for one mile, go ahead and write that. If you know you went for 20 minutes, you can write that as well. And don't forget to draw a picture or write about what you saw. So that'll be really fun to see in your journals, all right? So make sure you're getting your fitness time in, 10 to 15 minutes listed in your journals, but I would like you to try to find a way to get an hour, even if it's running up and down the stairs for a little bit. Get some of those energies out. All right, great job. So we've been working on different words and different things. Today is Thursday. We're working on J words. All right, so I want you to fill out your J part of your dictionary. So remember, you all have one of these kindergarten sight word dictionary for both pre-K and kindergarten. And you're going to work on J words today. So this little spot right here, so there's one, two, three of those little spots. I want you to write an uppercase and a lowercase j, all right? And then I want you to find three words. One, two, three. Three words to write in here. Then write a lowercase and an uppercase j here. And then write your words here, right? So that's what I want you to work on today. Think of j words. J words are all over the place. They're in the books we read. They're in the months we talk about, right? There's three j ones in our months. Does anybody remember? January. June and July can all be written in your top one. You could do all your months right here on the top. That would be great and you fill in that whole square. Then you'd only have two squares left, right? Great job. So be working on that. And now we're going to watch the serpent and the eagle. So make sure you have your literacy journals. The front cover looks like that. And then you're gonna turn to the page that says the serpent and the eagle. It might be blank, but keep going in order for your journal writing, all right? And then we're gonna do some cause and effects, but don't write anything until we talk about it first, okay? So let's watch the video on the serpent and the eagle and see what lesson we learned today. The serpent and the eagle, an Aesop's fable. A serpent had succeeded in surprising an eagle and wrapped himself around the eagle's neck. The eagle could not reach the serpent, neither with beak nor claw. 
far into the sky he soared, trying to shake off his enemy. But the serpent's hold only tightened. And slowly the eagle sank back to the earth, gasping for breath. A countryman chanced to see the unequal combat. In pity for the noble eagle, he rushed up and soon had loosened the coiling serpent and freed the eagle. The serpent was furious. He had no chance to bite the watchful countryman. Instead, he struck at the drinking horn hanging at the countryman's belt, and into it let fly the poison of his fangs. The countryman now went on toward home. Becoming thirsty on the way, he filled his horn at a spring and was about to drink. There was a sudden rush of great wings. Sweeping down, the eagle seized the poison horn from his savior's hands and flew away with it to hide it where it could never be found. So kids, do you know the lesson of this Aesop's fable? That an act of kindness is well repaid. All right, everybody, great job with the video. All right, so take out your journals and you're gonna to turn to your page and make sure if it's not already written, The Serpent and the Eagle, that you write your title, right? Title cross here so I know which video you were looking at when you wrote this. And today's date is Thursday, May 14, 2020. Great job, so five slash 14 slash 2020. And you're gonna put that either up here or down here, somewhere on here so I know what date you completed this, right? All right, so the serpent and the eagle, cause and effect. What was the lesson with everything, all the causes, everything that happened through the thing, what was the end result? What was the effect, right? There's a lesson learned, right? Acts of kindness get repaid. So say you help somebody across the street or say you help somebody carry something or say you help somebody open a door for you. Sometimes, somewhere, somebody's gonna start doing kindness things and all of a sudden, Wow, instead of me opening open the door, today everybody held the open door open for me. So there's different things that happen. We should never do something kind just to get something in return though. We do something kind because it's in our heart, right? It's a good thing to do. So today, I want you to come up with your own two causes and effects, okay? With something to do with kindness, all right? So what represents kindness in your life? Have you ever done something that you got something returned in kindness? Did you help carry plants to a neighbor's house from their car and they decided to give you one of the plants and you brought it home to your mom? That's an act of kindness. You did something that was kind and then somebody did something that was kind to you. So see if you can think of anything. If you can't, maybe ask mom and dad, but find out some real life situations of acts of kindness. What did you do that all of a sudden you received kindness for? All right, or maybe you gave kindness. You did something kind and what happened to that person? Did you hand them a flower because it was a bad rainy day and they weren't doing so good and they smiled? Your act of kindness, your cause, you gave them a flower, the effect, they smiled, they were happy. So think about those things and write two causes and two effects, okay? Remember, pre cares you can use single words if you need to. Start trying to do a sentence. Mom and dad can help spell everything out for you. But writing practice is really important and putting those letters into words. Practice, 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 right? All right, great job. So we are on Thursday. So what does that mean with our literacy journals? Does anybody remember? J words, right? And so we're gonna start maybe with the months, right? In our first square, January, June, and July. So J words need to be finished today. So math, adding and subtracting, fun. Let's talk about subtracting and adding. We've been working so hard on adding and subtracting, right? So in your math journals, so when you go to take out your math journals, you're gonna to turn to this page. It says adding and subtraction, fun. So there's adding in the top and subtraction or takeaway in the bottom. So what I want you to do is create your adding and subtracting sentences like we've been doing. You'll do two in the top box and two in the bottom box. So the two adding ones, you can do anything you want, all right? But I want you to illustrate it, maybe two, three, right? Plus one, two. So what is that illustration? What does that equal? Three plus two. Well, let's count. 
one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna put five dots here, and then below it, remember you're gonna write small enough that all this fits in here, I'm gonna put my number three plus two equals five. All right, and then you're gonna do another set. So you don't have to use mine, but you're gonna do two sets in the addition area, and then two sets in the subtraction. So let's do a subtraction set now. All right, so let's see, let's start out with one, Four. So how many did I start out with? One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to take away. So that's just the dash line, right? And then I'm going to take away, how many is that? Let's count. One, two, three. So what does that equal? If I had four and I took away three, so I'm going to take away one, two, three. So I'm going to cover up three. How many am I left with? That's right, one dot. So I'm gonna put my one dot there. So now I'm going to write the numbers for this sentence. Four minus three equals one. And you can use your blocks or your cars or your crayons, whatever your counters are, if that helps you find the answers. That is okay. But I want you to do two sets of subtraction in the bottom part square, all right? So I should see two sets of when you're doing shapes or designs, and then the written math set that has the numbers, all right, for both the addition and the subtraction, okay? Printmaking, it's Thursday, we get to do art, yay! So there's a separate video that's all about printmaking, right? Because does anybody remember who our artist is, right? So it almost looks like printmaking, right? So we're gonna work on that. There are some things you'll need, so I'll go over that in the beginning of the video, and you can collect, pause the video and collect those, but we're going to have some fun with printmaking today, okay? So, recap. What are we doing today? We're finishing our cause and effect about kindness, two sentences for each. We're working on our J words in our dictionary. We're adding subtracting fun, and we're going to do our printmaking. Do not forget, we're coming up on the end of the week. We all meet on Friday, right? Try to get your homework pages done. You have your reading log, your letter and sound matching. Pre-K, you have your segmenting words that you're still practicing. You should be practicing all week on segmenting. You have your body coverings and what animals wear. So we're gonna talk some about that on Friday, so make sure you have some of that done. All right, I'll see you in art. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the notification button. I'll see you all on Friday.